Hello! So this video is going to be good if you want to see the before and afters of these two paintings behind me. Um, I have revisited them again. Oh my lord! Can't tell you how many times um, or how long I've spent with these two now, but um, it's been a really great exercise learning about you using shadows and I've learned a lot by doing and they're not perfect but they're progress I think so um, that's what this video is mostly about is these two um, these two large paintings these table tops with chairs and foliage and um, yeah I can't think of what much else to share at this moment so thanks for watching it's a little bit it's become autumny I think it's warming up now but it was really quite chilly this morning so Aura has her jacket on and I've found a jumper got it out from the ziploc bag under the bed <laughs> um, so yeah I will I look forward to sharing with you some of the little ones that I've been making and um, they'll come in some future videos and if you're looking for something for Mother's Day I have little bundles of my cards available hopefully my shop on my website is working i am the maker of my website the whole thing i've done so sometimes i have a bit of trouble with some of the things but you're always welcome to email me if you want to purchase something that you've seen on there or message me on instagram i'm happy to help and the good thing about the um cards is they're already priced with the postage included in uh, within australia and probably just be a couple dollars more, I think, to send to America, hopefully, um, or elsewhere in the world. But again, just let me know if you'd like that. And um, I will see if I can put some pictures of those on here and put the link to my website below. Okay, well, thanks for watching and welcome to the new people. Um, I had a flurry of new followers join last week, which was so lovely in your comments. So, um, yeah, I look forward to meeting more of you as we go along. And those of you who are enjoying following along, getting to know you more as you as we interact as the months go by, because I'm intending, hoping to get more videos up and sort of make it a weekly thing. Oh, the snuggling of this little baby dog. She's 15. She's not a baby, but she's like my baby. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing. I know because she's getting so much older that it's a precious thing to have her. I mean, it always has felt that way, but just knowing how dogs don't live for 30 years, 40 years, you know, um, knowing that we don't know how long. We have this little earth angel with us so i'm just every day loving the cuddles and i don't mind that she gets me up in the middle of the night sometimes to go outside i think that's kind of cool that she doesn't go and pee on the carpet so yeah this is our beautiful little aura she's a little foxy chihuahua and um we love you just love you don't we She's the cutest thing. So I love putting a little snippet of her on the end of the videos. All right. Well, thanks for watching and um, hope you enjoy these two and I will see you next time. So I took a chunk of the table out and then I put it back because the chair looked too wonky. Next, I'm going to make some big changes and I wanted to um, show the before and after. So um, best I just do it and then come back, I think.
So here is, I believe, the finished product. I've spent many hours in the last few days um, completing this one. So, um, yeah, as you can see, I had to put the piece of that table back. At one point, I had taken a slice of the table away and then I put it back because the chair looked a little weird. And then did all of these shadows. So, um, wow, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really happy actually with the end result. Kind of surprised. It went in a whole new direction that I did not anticipate at all. So, um, yeah, it's got me really interested now in setting up more still lifes. But like I think I already mentioned in another little snippet, um, having the actual thing set up, like over here, um, setting it up so I can see the actual shape of the shadows will be helpful. So this one's made up. And so, um, yeah, yeah, but a, a joy to create and, um, yeah, may find its new home in Gundawindi. So, as much as I thought it was all finished, um, I had a closer look at this painting and something annoyed me too much that I couldn't leave it. I was actually up at three o'clock this morning doing some white over these little wee leaves and I see now that they're peeping through again, which that might be okay, maybe. I'll, I'll have to think about that. Um, the, the leaves shapes that I did were just too not quite relating to the, the shape of these. And I know I've got perfectionist tendencies, of course, but it's also a case of when something jumps out at you that doesn't feel quite right, I just feel like I'll be letting myself down if I didn't change it. If I didn't notice it, that's one thing, but I really noticed it. So um, again, hard lesson learned. I kind of raced into it all yesterday, trying to finish, trying to get it done. So it's actually, I was thinking how tricky it is. I, one of my things is I see really well out of one eye, hardly at all out of this eye. So I basically see one with one eye. So I can't judge distance. So I be careful driving, it's all fine. I just be overly careful. And I always like a big car space or I don't even bother trying. So things like that. But it makes you wonder, it makes me wonder if it has some effect on the way I paint. I heard someone say something about when you have that kind of vision, the outlines is something you really see. Um, I don't know, but it might. I wondered if that related to how come I love um, dark outlines and, and line drawing. I don't know, random. Um, but yeah, I was thinking these kind of look flattened, but that's okay. That's just how it is. Um, but then I was thinking, so, and there's so many leaves, so they can't all end up as shadows. So in this case, I am going to just have to be selective, but I guess I just want the, the sort of shape that I've got here to relate a little better to the shadow that I made. Um, so that's what I'll be doing today, hopefully just this morning, get that done. But yeah, that's what's, that's what's first on the agenda this morning. And mixing the white, I was doing that in the middle of the night because I was awake, couldn't sleep. So um, I'll show you. Oh, and I didn't even put the lid back on. <laughs> um, so I just got titanium white and then just to warm it up a tiny bit, I added a bit of this antique white because this is sort of quite buttery, yummy. It's a bit too warm. It's not what I wanted. And that's probably the background I had of the previous, um, the fruity one was a lot of this and also to make the white a little bit harmonious with the painting I put a little wee dab of that which is the color I've put here for the floor so I've just kept it simple for myself 
making that um, floor colour. But I'm also noticing how I've got the shadows going over there. That was something else that was occurring to me in the middle of the night. That I might need to make them just a tiny bit darker because they're not really noticeable. See, these shadows feel really quite dark as uh, connected to the white. So I'll see about that as well. And that was tricky to know exactly where those lines would land. But again, kind of like artistic license, take a, a sort of a guess and hope that it, it makes sense with the image. Because what you're creating when you do all of these shadows is you're creating other negative shapes and they become really interesting shapes all through the painting. So yeah, me and shadows, I think, are going to have some fun in the coming months. painted new leaf shadows um, because the, sh the vase is so far back on the table I just felt like with the shadows of the light coming this direction I couldn't really spread them then more um, over the side so I've got a big empty space but hopefully that is like a resting space for the eye when there's so much else going on and an invitation for someone to pull out that chair and come and sit. So now I have been so thrilled with how this has gone. Um, I have come back to visit this one. And now it needed shadows, didn't it? <laughs> I was avoiding it before. Um, but I've been just giving it some just small shadows as if the light is quite high because again I have to make it up and so then the challenging part for me now is the <coughs> making a shadow of this um, this arrangement here just a, I want to do just a, a small hint of it um, you know these are kind of fantastic fantastical they're not true to life in some ways so last, uh, yesterday I went walking and gathered um, some greenery so that, and I've set up a light here so that I can have a practice time of doing um, what, what the shadows can look like when you hold it up, the light high. And, and so I needed sort of a bit of reference. And I got so excited because the other green board, um, so that's the first one and that was the second. And so now it's um, going to have a, a still life. So that's what I'll be doing this week. But this is the priority. This one and its big friend, they have to be ready to be packaged up to be sent off to Gundawindi. So I can't distract anymore. It's Sunday and I need to get into this. And so also what I've been looking at and realised what's not quite working for me now is that warm creamy background it's not delighting me in the way that this one now is and that doesn't mean I automatically go and do the same color background as this one I have to consider see this one here didn't have any reds or any other things so I've just kept like the palette um so very similar so that it worked but with this one excuse me swinging you around about um i was thinking to explain to you i have been a bit like a chemist <laughs> and so what i'm doing is i'm doing little sample grays and um i did come up with an idea on the ipad which i really liked so now trying to come up with that same color that i did on the ipad is a bit tricky um so I've done, you know, a drop of this Payne's Grey, a little bit of Rain, which is a beautiful fluid um, paint that is no longer available. So 
This was Pam Carriker. She must have done a range with Matisse and it's no longer being made, but I love it. It's a really fantastic, moody color. So um, I've been aware of how much I love it. And so when my olive green was running low, I've been trying to do a mixture. So I'll keep doing that. I'll keep playing with this one, um, you know, when I've got a bit of time. I think it would be worth my while doing some swatching, playing around and uh, seeing if I can do my own version of this because I really loved it so much. Don't you hate that when you find something you love and it goes out of um, production? We've just discovered the same things happen with an aftershave Philip has loved since 2005 it came about um, and they don't make it anymore. And so, oh, you know, you have to, <laughs> you have to do something else or something new. Um, so, like I was saying, what I'm doing to get the neutral colour that I want behind here, um, I'm, I've got some various guidelines that are helping me. One of the things is that cool is meant to go backwards, warm coming forward. So I've got a warmth to the table and the fruit and the arrangement. There's warmth in all of that, which is brilliant because that means it will come forward. So now I've got to find the right cool. I've done a couple of tiny little swatches here and I didn't really want it to be a cool green. A cool gray green. It's kind of what I think I'm after. So um, that is a little tricky because I did think, oh, on a discussion with a friend again, um, we came up with maybe white um, kind of done loosely over the top so this cream would kind of come through. But I just don't feel like white is giving me the overall feeling that I'm after. So... Learning a lot in a crash course at the moment when you ask yourself to do things a little bit more um, succinctly. So I will see how it goes. So there's a little bit of that rain in there. Um, as you can see, see it's a little bit too... Um, yellowy, limey, green, whereas this greyish one, I think... There's a quality to it that I like that causes you to this to be more featured, if that makes sense. So I think it's got a little bit of um, ocean blue as well. So that's not working yet. I don't want it to be too dark either. I think it might need... So whether I, I've been using this neutral grey a little bit. This is when you feel like a little bit of a chemist. So rather than adding a drop of um, Payne's grey, you know, very dark, I'll try it with this and see if I get itch. It's like you're trying to take out that... Mm, I don't know, taking out or putting in, I'm not quite sure. Um, see, it's almost like these greys are a bit more like what I'm needing. So that's what I used in the other, the other painting. That's the grey. What else did I do? Oh, here we go. So this is what I did for the Winter Evergreens. This darker one I used on the table for the shadows. And then I did a much lighter, soft grey white for the background. And when it dried, it looked quite, you know, it look, looks sort of darkish, but it really brings the white table to life. So that's interesting. I can see that I'm really not getting to that grey place yet here. I might need to try it on a different piece, like a paper. Let's see what happens if I put 
This is all very precarious, but I think it's fun to kind of show you what's happening here. So there's a bit of Payne's Grey. Because once I've got this little pot here, I don't really want to make a big mistake. working actually. I'm going to bravely go where I haven't gone very much before. Realising greys are a whole new world for me. I've not really dabbled in greys very much but these neutral greys, I've seen them on some other um, art over the years. How much it makes colour come to life when you master the greys as well not just using colour. It's very interesting. Do not do too much. Payne's grey is quite gorgeous. It's got that teeny tinge of blue. It's like a sophisticated colour in my mind. Do you know what I mean? There's an elegance to um, Payne's Grey. Probably because it's so related to black. It's like what you see in sort of ravens and stuff. They've got that tinge of blue-black sometimes. Just a little bit of a time. Can't really go back. Yeah, needs more. Could be interesting that it's ink I'm using as well. Maybe I could try some Payne's Grey paint. Not sure about pigment loads and ink. I think they're pretty good, but let's see. Actually, best not change tack because it might really take it in a different direction. And since I've found out but I feel like this is really quite close to what I'm looking for. Doing the lid up each time because it get quite clumsy sometimes. It would be just like me to knock it over all over the iPad, can you imagine? So it pays to be a bit careful sometimes when you're balancing a whole bunch of things like this. This is still not quite there. It's still kind of a bit yellowy. I'm loath to try mixing. I, I kind of like, does it want a spot of the green, but I don't want to make it too greeny. So I think I'll keep going with this Payne's Grey. Mm. Seems it's actually, it's not as potent. Oof, let's see. See, lose it. Oh, it's getting nice. It's, and also darkens when it dries, so definitely I should do a little swatch. It's kind of getting more like a little neutral, but it's still not as um, grey as that one. So I think it still has to go further, isn't that amazing? 
I think that's um, what's in the rain, actually. There's uh, another colour called Ocean Blue, which is very much like Thalo Turquoise. So I feel like this rain has got Payne's Grey, Olive Green and Thalo Turquoise or um, Ocean Blue. That's what I feel like intuitively is in there. Not just intuitively, actually, just by looking as well for it, studying it. That's what it feels like it has in it. slow that is to change hey but it's taken that kind of like well, not sweetness but that warmth out of it that red greeny avocado warmth I didn't want that in this hmm it's quite nice still not quite the gray of that one I, I could do a little piece on the painting and see I'll let that dry and see what how I feel. And I had thought this one was finished. But again, I've just spent many, many hours in the last couple of days um, revisiting this one as well. I took away the warm cream background and gave it a cool grey, which I think makes the greens and the table um, stand out more, the colours. I added a couple of collaged flowers. I painted them on... Um, a yellow painted piece of paper and just wanted to bring in a little more color into that arrangement because it just had a lot of greens and so those oranges are talking to each other and in making a little triangle which is nice even though we've got this little friend over here but sort of an odd number um, these two become kind of features but I don't think they're taking over they're just adding you know this kind of orange um, story creates also another triangle that way so triangles are, are pleasing to the eye um, we've got a triangle here with the tablecloth so um, yeah random and intentional both so I think I'm pretty excited about these two they've really stretched me they've made me consider things in a new way and um, brought about uh, sort of not realism but sort of um, which I don't want to paint realistically but I yeah I can't, I'll have to talk about that another time I don't actually know what I think about that at this moment but I just know that I love starting with chaos and bringing in some order and then it really is just a case of I've got to learn how much order do I want to bring. Sometimes I feel like I take it a little far. But this time, I think it's finished in a sweet spot. And the Virgo me had a really great time with all the details. <laughs> so that's uh, Autumn Abundance. Good morning, little sweetie. Good morning, little sweetie.